Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. On July 2nd, 2021, Transair Flight 810 took off from Honolulu on a short cargo flight to the neighboring island of Maui. Shortly after becoming airborne, one of the plane's turbofan engines faltered, forcing the first officer to reduce power. This led to a sequence of errors that convinced the captain one of the engines was failing. As a result, the crew decided to ditch the aircraft in the ocean just 11 minutes into the flight. Though both men survived, the heavily damaged aircraft ended up sinking to a depth of more than 400 feet, some two miles off the Oahu coast. Even though boat and aircraft wreckage are often used to create artificial reefs, there were several reasons why Transair Flight 810 could not simply be left in the ocean. For starters, the plane was loaded with fuel. This, along with countless other hazardous materials, could do significant damage to the local ecosystem and wildlife. More importantly, it was crucial to determine the cause of the accident. Recovering the wreckage allows investigators to analyze physical evidence to determine what may have gone wrong. Given the immense value of the aircraft, this information can be used to satisfy the insurance companies and the operator. The National Transportation Safety Board coordinated with Transair's insurance company to launch a full-scale recovery operation shortly after the initial incident. To accomplish this, they utilized a research vessel known as RV Bold Horizon, which was equipped with a 7,000-pound remotely operated vehicle. This ROV would be used to locate and retrieve various pieces of the aircraft, which could then be hoisted to the surface by a derrick barge. This barge, the Salta Verde, was equipped with a large crane, which would aid in pulling the heavy sections of Flight 810 from depths of over 400 feet. Among the first pieces to be retrieved were sections of the engines. All of these pieces had to be carefully returned to shore where they could be carefully evaluated at a secure facility. By effectively piecing the wreck back together, the NTSB investigators hoped to determine the cause of the engine failures and subsequent ditching. The large-scale ROV proved integral to the recovery efforts, as its opposable arms and ability to operate at extreme depths allowed it to attach recovery lines to large sections of the aircraft fuselage. Though it had broken into several parts, most of these remained intact, which made the recovery significantly easier. It also allowed investigators to closely evaluate the damage to various components to see what, if anything, might be salvaged. The 
The main goal of the recovery operation was to locate the flight data recorder, also known as the black box. This contained critical data that would allow investigators to better understand the events leading up to the incident. The recovery of the black box allowed the NTSB to perform an in-depth post-accident investigation. As with past crashes, this is a comprehensive process consisting of advanced computer simulations. simulations show readouts from various indicators in the cockpit, altitude, and a readout of the final conversation in the cockpit. The NTSB also painstakingly reconstructs the aircraft from the wreckage in an attempt to identify any mechanical or system-related issues. Ultimately, the physical wreckage is vital to determining what caused a crash. Unfortunately, downed aircraft are not always found. When it comes to missing aircraft, none is more mysterious than the disappearance of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. This Boeing 777 tragically went missing on March 8, 2014, while flying from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing with 239 people on board. Fearing a crash, multiple governments immediately assembled teams to help find the missing plane. The U.S. Navy assumed a very large role in the search for MH370 launching coordinated low-level flights in an effort to locate any survivors. One of the primary aircraft used was the Boeing P-8A Poseidon, a maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft equipped with advanced radar, electro-optical sensors, and sonar systems. Though typically used for anti-submarine warfare, the P-8's unique capabilities allowed it to cover large areas of the ocean, detecting objects both on the surface and underwater. The U.S. also conducted widespread searches at sea level, utilizing sophisticated assets, like the USS Kidd. An early work class guided missile destroyer, the Kid is equipped with powerful radar and sonar, as well as several helicopters, which could expand its search area. To get a better view of what might lie under the water, many of the ships involved in the MH370 search were equipped with towed pinger locators. These were configured to detect the acoustic signals emitted by the underwater locator beacons attached to an aircraft's flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder. They are typically deployed from surface vessels and towed behind them at a slow speed, hoping to detect and eventually triangulate pings from the sunken aircraft. The scale of the search effort was immense, featuring ships and planes from Australia, China, and the United States. In the weeks after the flight's disappearance, aircraft and ships covered an area of approximately 120,000 square kilometers in the southern Indian Ocean alone. By far, 
The most challenging part of the MH370 search was being able to look beneath the ocean surface for signs of the aircraft. For this reason, rescuers deployed the Artemis. Autonomous underwater vehicle, a deep sea mapping device capable of operating at depths of up to 4,500 meters. The Artemis was able to scan areas of the ocean floor that satellite images helped identify as the last known position of MH370. Unfortunately, harsh conditions and operational challenges stifled the operation. While the AUV did detect several objects on the seabed, none were found to be related to the missing aircraft. Though several pieces of debris confirmed to be from MH370 were found on some islands in the western Indian Ocean, the main wreckage and the bulk of the aircraft have never been found. To this day, it remains one of aviation's greatest mysteries. Because Malaysian Airlines 370 was never found, there was never an official salvage operation. However, the United States Navy is actually incredibly familiar with managing such recoveries. A prime example was the recovery of an FA-18 from the bottom of the ocean in 2015. The crash occurred not due to pilot error, but because of an issue with one of the engines. Nonetheless, it was important to bring the aircraft back to the surface, both to collect data about the incident and to keep its sophisticated technology from falling into enemy hands. In the search for Flight 370, the P-8 Poseidon played an integral role. However, in November 2023, a P-8A Poseidon actually overshot the runway while landing at Marine Corps Air Station Kaniho Bay in Hawaii. It ended up sinking into the bay, which is an environmentally sensitive area. A salvage operation was quickly launched in order to recover the damaged plane, which was now lying in shallow water atop a coral reef. The first step in the recovery process was to send divers down to evaluate both the condition of the plane and the reef underneath it. Though there was some damage to the coral, divers discovered that no large sections had been broken off in the incident. Next, divers made an effort to remove the estimated 2,000 gallons of fuel on board, which posed a serious threat of environmental contamination. To accomplish this, the U.S. Navy installed large floats underneath the P-8. When inflated, these helped lift it to the surface of the water. From there, they were able to maneuver the floating plane close to the shore, where it could be successfully towed back onto land.
the plane was successfully recovered on December 2nd, just 12 days after the incident. Though few recoveries take place this close to shore, this proved that the U.S. military really is an expert at recovering downed aircraft. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.